Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, is soup something you eat or drink? Also, don't point, don't can, point your fucking pen at me like that. Also, can you touch your nose with your tongue? I'm not. How dare you? <laughs> you brought that one into this too. Uh, 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 Doctor Justin, I'll take the second question first. No. Okay. Good question. Great. <laughs> Flawless logic, by the way. Your conviction behind that dumb, answer. <laughs> what What a dumb icebreaker question. Hey, can you do this? It's either a, why would you why is an icebreaker a yes or no question? Hey, hey, how much dexterity you got in that tongue? Also, do you want to go in the other room? Yeah, it's the same. Can the you icebre- touch your? That's the icebreaker question. It's like it's like can you touch your tongue, your nose? Okay, what else can you touch with your tongue? See, that's an open ended question. Right. That's where you get off to having some fun times. We're like, can you do this? No, cool, cool, or yes. Well, prove it. I'll talk to cool. you a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, it's like great. We've accomplished so much with this question. So, Justin, can you? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Hard stop. So glad we we solved that. Uh, <laughs> is soup something you eat or drink? It's both. It's both. Oh wait, because the question is. Oh, this can is a Terrence, you drink. This is a Terrence Howard special. If it's both, here we go. <laughs> because the question is, can you drink chunks? When you think of stuff that you drink, is it usually chunky? Well, we're talking. Is tomato soup chunky? It well, it can depends because be. that's that's why I'm saying because some soup is chunky. Right, sure. Like sure. You got baked potato soup. You've got French onion soup. Right. You got chicken noodle soup. You got you got chicken noodle soup. You've got a- Italian wedding soup. Sure. You know, you've got uh, broccoli and cheddar soup. You've got mm. taco soup. Yeah, broccoli, you and cheddar know, soup. Now you're talking my language. You know, oh, yeah. there's there's all sorts of types of chunky soups. In there which is. case, can you drink them? I mean, to some extent, you can get the broth, you know, but at some point, you got to eat the chunks, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, you got to eat the chunks. What if we're, so, what if we're talking about like a, like a, like a pureed, like, like gourd, like a squash, like a, like a, like a fall soup that's pureed, nothing, no chunks whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Can you eat that? You can drink that for sure. If you want. Do you eat it you know? though? I mean, you can, but. Honestly, let's, it, how pureed are we talking? Is it put? Is the is the puree then put through a strainer, so that's like ultra thin? Because in that case, it's like, what are we even doing with the fucking spoon? Let's just grab that bowl and just drink it. You know what I mean? Like we're sitting here just trying to drink water with a spoon. It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> I would say not put through here? a strainer, but again, it's nothing that you're actually chewing. Everything can be swallowed mm-hmm. without any sort of effort whatsoever. All right, I want to isolate that audio, and we're going to be using that again in the future. And go ahead. also, go ahead, and mark I know that I just, clip right there. <laughs> I also, I also know that I just stayed at your house. Can I come back? Is the question. And how soon? <laughs> Are we? Do we need to test this? I mean, I just just need just. I just all I need to know because you know, based on what you just said. Oh, okay. Hold I on. I think I know what you're gonna. You can come right away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come. There it is. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. Getting back to uh, to the soup question here, yeah, I, I guess it depends on what kind of soup it is, right? Sure. Because if you've got something that's pureed, silky, and everything like that, there's sometimes I've made a, a tomato soup and I'm like, you know, what, what am I? Who am I fooling here? Like, let's just take this bowl up to my lips and let's just down the hatch. Let's like call a, it a day. Like a good old why can I'm, of Campbell's tomato soup, old school. Right. Campbell's. The only reason why I'm using a spoon is because it's fucking hot right now. It'll burn my throat if right. I try to just you know down this. But once it's once it's cool enough, woo, down the hatch. But you know, it's not to say, is you know, like same thing with a ramen, right? Ramen's got a broth and some noodles and some other stuff in it. At some point, once you get all the, the chunks out, you can drink it. But sure. So at for that the point, most part, does it become like this? Is it two different things, really? Like, because if you can eat something, typically that's food. If you can drink it, typically that's a beverage, right? Like, would you consider, is that a hard line definitive for you? Like, if you can drink it, it's a beverage or is, could it be considered a food? I guess it depends, right? Because is like a protein shake a drink? Is that a beverage? I would consider yes, a protein shake is a is a drink. 
A shake in, in of consider, itself for me is is more of a leans more drink. We're getting into what is a sport territory here, and I fucking love it. Right, because is a hot dog a sandwich? I also I also consider like a beverage is refreshing, right? It quenches your thirst. Sure, you know, because if you fall in that direction, then like a protein shake is there to fill me up with nutrients and to satiate my hunger. It's a meal. Is right? coffee a beverage though? Because it doesn't quench thirst. It is a beverage. Because it's on the menu as a beverage. So we have to consider that initially. Like, why is it a beverage, right? Right. Because it's it just does serve juice. a purpose. It's just, it's just hot, hot bean juice, baby. And um, it's 98% water. So, yeah, it's a beverage. If it's 98% water, then it's a beverage. So there you go. Oh, okay. We've That's definitive math. We've, <laughs> that's, we've settled that's on the, the numbers. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it is. It's 98% water. So that means it's a fucking beverage. You know? Done. Yep. You can you can also have cold brew, right? I can I can kind of like quench your thirst. That could quench you. it. So it just depends yeah. on yeah you know, what temperature the coffee is served at for sure. Right. Exactly. And are we talking something that has like a buttload of cream and and caramel and and chunks of stuff like you know because this this is where this gets down this but but we're getting off topic. We're talking about soups. Right. We're talking about soups. So I say it depends on the we're, soup. We're sitting here talking about soups. Soup? We're talking. We're talking about. We're soups? talking about beverages. How about. We're talking about coffee. We got to get back to soup, baby. You're trying to we gotta eat get back You're to talking soup. about soups. <laughs> we got to get back to the soup and get in the soup with me, Justin. Get, get in the soup. Let's get in the soup, guys. We're in the soup now, baby. That's, that's the slogan for Mind Gap. Get in the soup. <laughs> Mind Gap. Please get in the soup. Please, I'm begging anyone listening to this who has an artistic uh, bone in their body, please make a T-shirt design. With the Mind Gap logo that says Mind Gap, get in the soup. I want that so bad. Mind Gap, get in the soup. <laughs> that will be a special that we will run on uh, on uh, Redbubble. Mind Gap, <coughs> get in the soup. There it is. I like there that. There it one. is. That one's pretty good. Um, um, so, I, so I, yeah, it's to interesting... me it depends on the it depends on the soup. So okay, that's, that's, I, that's, but that's I think that think that is an interesting like. Is it is there any chunks in it? If there is, if there's any need to macerate, then that is eating. If it is purely, uh, I don't think you used that word right. <laughs> is is macerate not chew? I don't know if that is. Is it masticate? Macerate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I say it right or wrong? You said it wrong. What did uh, I say? It, you said macerate. It is says, it masticate? Especially w- with reference to food soften or become softened by soaking in a liquid. Or masticate. Chew. There you go. M-A-S-T-I-C-A-T. Masticate. Fine. What's ma- So yes. macerate is to soak? <laughs> Macerate's like where you put like a bunch of berries in with some sugar and whatever and some lemon zest. And then over time, it draws all the liquid out and it becomes soft. And you get this beautiful little macerated berry syrup. Goodness. So if you have to chew, if you're macerated. You ever you ever macerate your strawberries, Justin? Huh? You ever done that? I've muddled. I've never macerated. Oh, okay. Well, all right. We got ourselves how, a got JV soon, player over here, ladies and gentlemen. How soon can you come back he's up a, here? <laughs> he's looking to get up to. He's looking to get up to the varsity squad, but he's got to keep trying out at this point in time. So it's all good. So anything you have to masticate? All right. Anytime you have to chew the fucking thing in your mouth. <laughs> Anytime you got to use your fucking mouth to you gotta chew. You got to use your jaw and your teeth to fucking grind and chew. It's food. You're eating. Anytime. So I would say then, yeah, if there's no chunks in it, then you're drinking soup. You're drinking it with a spoon. I'd also say if you're using the, the spoon. framing of this question, the framing of this question, very Sith-like. It's very absolute. It's it really is. That, yeah. You know? There's a lot of. Yeah. So let us know what you guys think. Do you, is, yeah. is soup something you eat or drink, or is there a lot of gray area in there? Is it not just black or white? Let us know. Yeah. Where can let they know. let us know, Doug? Well, they can let us know at youtube.com slash mind gap podcast. Find the episode, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then comment and be like, yo, soup should be eaten. Soup should be drank. You guys are wrong. You guys are right. Here's my thoughts. Also, I love you. Keep making content. You guys make my day brighter. I'm not going to lie. You know, I kind of feel good after I listen to you guys. I chuckle out loud. It kind of brightens my day. I get I to just tell let my you guys friends. know you're doing all right. You tell my friends. I'm going to tell my words. friends. 
I'm going to tell my friends about, you know, the difference between macerate and masticate. It's also educational. These guys, they're, they're good dudes. They're you know? something. They're white guys talking about what everyone else is talking about. But you know what? They're good dudes. You should give them a try. <laughs> There's nothing unique uh, yeah. about anything that they're doing or them as people. But, you know, they're good dudes. One of them's bald and looks like the sloth from Ice Age. The other guy doesn't get commented on his appearance at all, but he seems okay. <laughs> Based on an Instagram photo, we might have a thinning situation that we have to keep an eye on. Oh, no. You might have a thinning situation. Here's Dear God. This podcast only has space enough for one bald hero, okay? That's right. You're goddamn right. <laughs> one bald hero. That's the name of my autobiography. <laughs> That's it. You can also check the link in the description for links to our Discord. Be a part of the Discord family. You can also find links to our Patreon and links to our merch at redbubble.com. You can also check us out on our social medias at MindGap Podcast. Any of that stuff would be great, and we'd appreciate it. We'd love you forever. Here, here. Maybe. Here, here. Cha-cha. Cha-cha. So, big news this week. Mm. Big news in the Marvel Universe. Uh, at this point... You all have probably heard of it. If you haven't, breaking news. This just in. <laughs> if if you haven't heard of it and you're listening to this podcast, you're making a lot of weird choices with your life. Yeah. Good for you if you haven't heard anything <laughs> about this until now. But uh, Robert Downey Jr. is returning to the Marvel Cinematic Universe to play Doctor Doom. So. Oh, mommy. Right. That was my reaction. <laughs> right? Okay. Like, that's the thing. It's uh, happening. Yeah. This, man, I don't know. When I What when, was your reaction, Justin, when you saw the news? Where I, were I, you when Robert <laughs> Downer Jr. took off his Doom mask to reveal that he is the actor playing Dr. Doom? Well, I think you were the one. I think you broke it. Broke the news to me. You sent oh. it to me on Instagram, right? Well, this just in. I broke the news right? to you. You're just breaking news all over the place. Yeah, and not I was staying because you're at your sized. house, and as I was yeah. going to sleep, I was trying to get my watch to charge a little bit, so I was just fucking around. I was like, I'll just send this to Justin. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I was uh, <clears throat> I was conflicted at best um, because look, I love Robert Downey Jr. as an actor. I thought he was mm -hmm. uh, a phenomenal Iron Man. Most of the stuff he's been in, I've I would like to think that I've seen a majority of his body of work, and I've liked everything I've watched. Um, but I just, I loved Iron Man, his turn as Iron Man and the Infinity Saga so much that there's something like wildly sacred about that to me as a nerd. And this, I don't know, I'm worried. I'm worried that this is going to cheapen that experience. Um, I appreciate the fact that the Russos are doing it and I have a lot of trust in them, but I don't know. I, I, I. I don't know how they're going to approach this, but what was when you sent it to me? What was your initial reaction? I was like, "Huh, that's that's a surprise. Didn't see that coming. You know, didn't even know this was happening." Because if anyone's not familiar, the uh, Kang the Conqueror saga is dead because what? Jonathan Majors went through some legal troubles, to put it lightly. He was having domestic issues with a lady, and uh, his career basically is over at this point in time. Not to say that he can't overcome this at some point, but right now they're like, no one wants anything to do with him. Yeah. And Disney unfortunately, like, we're going to part ways. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, in his contract to play Kang the Conqueror, uh, there was a, a line in there that said no one else but him could play that character. So when all this went down, Marvel was like, well, fuck, we have a whole Avengers movie. <laughs> Not to mention like everything they've sort of laid out with the Loki show. With, uh, you know, Ant-Man quantum mania. Right. And uh, some other stuff. They've been like laying the breadcrumbs to be like, this guy's going to be here. And now, unfortunately, uh, the most we've seen from Kang the Conqueror was probably quantum mania. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's just some guy that's going to be out there assembling his different reality versions of himself. And I don't know. Maybe they got into a big old debate and they're still just arguing about what they're going to do next but all that to say they're like we gotta just, fucking change change course here man yeah kang kang was like you know what forget multiverse domination i just want to start a really good movie club where yeah. we can talk about we can watch movies and talk about their artistic integrity and mm -hmm. that's what kang's doing now he's leading leading a very uh cerebral and serene life out in the multiverse 
I have a feeling that they're just doing like throwdowns, like to see which they're gang just battling is the best. each other. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they're just doing like a legit, you know, tournament amongst each other because that's what they do ultimately is they fight each other. You know, so they don't like each other enough. So if you un- unite the Kangs, that's when things get bad. Uh, <coughs> so anyway, so the, Marvel's like, we gotta, we gotta pivot. We gotta find something else because holy shit, this is bad. Right. Uh, really curious to see <laughs> how this affects any other content that is like mm-hmm. coming out that may have had allusions to this in any right. way, shape, or form. That'll be really, really interesting. Um, but you know, going with Doctor Doom, I think that's a great path. I don't know a ton about him, but I know he is a formidable foe in the Marvel universe, um, and it will be interesting to see him come to pass. <clears throat> it makes. A lot of sense going this route with the announcement of the Fantastic Four mm-hmm. m- movie coming out, and there I'm like, okay, so I'm sure they they were like, well, there's a lot of excitement around that. Let's just do this, pivot that way, and then we've got some we've got some easy tie-ins from a couple different angles. Yeah, so they could they'll make I I have for I just, you know I'm neutral with Marvel at this point in time. I've said this numerous times. The Infinity Saga was the apex. Anything mm-hmm. else that comes after, good or bad, whatever, does not tarnish right. Infinity Saga. So that's good in my <laughs> book. Um, with this, um, I like the Russos. I trust them. I think they'll do a good mm-hmm. job. Marvel has found creative ways to pull stuff like this off, so I'm open to it. I'm just curious about the casting of Robert Downey Jr. Of uh, Obviously, the question is, is Tony Stark an evil version of himself right. that becomes Doctor Doom because of the multiverse, or is he just playing? Robert Downey Jr. is just playing Doctor Doom, right? So is let's it, is, is, let's take each each aspect and let's let's see what we think about it. So let's start with the first one there, Tony Stark, because of the multiverse. Which, by the way, <laughs> I argue cheapens a lot of things. It's a lot of possibilities. There's some cool things you can do, like in Spider Man. It's some great stuff with mm-hmm. that. The Spider Verse, obviously awesome, but that was sort of like localized sort of things. Right. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. You got to see some weird stuff, some possibilities of things, but it was more. It, it just. It, oh that no! Did, yeah. Uh, that one. Captain that one Carter died in that universe. Right. Ah. Oh look, my Jim heart. from The Office is stretchy. Yeah. Oh no, His Xavier died. Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, Xavier died again in a different universe. <laughs> like. It's just it it doesn't allow the, the it doesn't make the stakes very high because it's like well just they're just existing in another universe at any point in time we right. can pull them in so Tony Stark potentially being like I don't know in another universe he is not in America he's in whatever fucking made up country that he's in you know and he just has that same skill set but he's just whatever you know and becomes Doctor Doom uh, yeah. what do you think about that I think that for me that's the most I would prefer that over the other option. Uh, this like it makes way more sense to me that Tony Stark goes some version of him through whatever events you know unfold, cause him to go rogue and turn evil, and uh, you know he lived long enough to see himself become the villain kind of thing. Don't bring um, that into this. Don't don't merge worlds. All right. Well, hey, look, that's just that's the hot thing right now. We're merging worlds left and right. So fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think that makes the most sense to me. Uh, I don't. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it, but I think that makes way more sense than just, oh look, then another universe. Victor Von Doom looks like a doppelganger to Tony Stark. That just doesn't. That to me, yeah, that just he, doesn't make see, sense. He's wearing a mask, so maybe you won't even see him the whole time. A very valid point. However, I don't think you pay Robert Downey Jr. money to hide Robert Downey Jr.'s face. Sure, you do. <laughs> Sure you do. This is why you're not an exec. <laughs> yeah, right. Who's the guy that played V from V for Vendetta? You know, like. I don't think he was Robert Downey Jr. level. Bullshit. Though. That guy played Elrond. That guy. Well, played, I know what he played. That guy. I'm no, we're going to go through his whole. All right, here we go. Discography is not the word, but his whole <laughs> thing of what he's played. He played Red Skull. <laughs> he played, you know, Agent Smith. I mean, the guy. Is well known. in movies. He's in movies. He's in movies. That he is, was in Hacksaw Ridge. You know, that's played movie Andrew Garfield's abusive yep. father. You know, he's been in some stuff, man. Yeah, you know, you know what? I'm not contesting that. You know, and I'm he did saying. a hell of a job in V for Vendetta, just being masked up the whole time. So it's 100%. not to say that Robert Downey Jr. can't do the same thing. 
You know, he couldn't even make it through Comic Con without ripping that thing off. Well, that was the plan, Justin. You can't even. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, was um, it, or did Robert Downey Jr. dictate it? Oh, what if he? What if they're like, just go out there and don't take your mask off, and then just leave the stage? People are like, who the fuck is it? Like, right? And he's just like, no, fuck you. Ha! He pulls it off, and there's another mask. He's like, ha ha! <laughs> and then he, it's a huge Jackman mask. Bomb, that would be... and then he disappears. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, look, I just, the way that they, in Iron Man, they figured out how to do the heads up display in order to show him inside the suit to give him camera time and make that a little bit more real. I have no doubt that he'll spend a majority of the movie, or at least, I mean, a lot of the movie in, in that mask, but the, the, undoubtedly you have to give some backstory. You've got to show, there's going to be an origin story with him. You know, there is people love giving origin stories. So mm-hmm. there's going to be some of him outside of that mask and, I just don't buy the fact that a Victor Von Doom looks like Tony Stark. I just I, that that's a little even in this arena a little too far fetched for me. It'll it'll be tough if it's I don't know. I, I feel like Victor Von Doom is just it's just another version of Tony Stark. I feel like that's just a disservice to Victor Von Doom. Like well, it's right, like well, actually it's just Tony Stark. It's like oh okay. Well, you, are you saying yeah. that if it if Tony Stark if they go the Tony Stark goes evil route? Yeah. And they just take away the character of Victor Von Doom yeah. altogether. Yeah. It's like, and he, and but I mean, he is yeah. Victor Von Doom, but in that universe, you know, he's. Oh, he's yeah, not, yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, ah, I kind of like, right. whatever. Um, I don't know. And also it just cheapens the fact that, you know, I don't know. It, to some extent, it would be kind of cool, I guess, if he ends up in the universe that we're familiar with, Earth, whatever. 616 or whatever. 616 I, I don't or know if that's, yeah. Come at us, nerd. You know, and know. then all of a sudden it's like revealed that it's, you know, it's an evil Tony Stark. I mean, that could be have profound effects on people as they're like, no, yeah. What if people hero. saw it and was like, Oh my God, he's back. And then it's yeah. like, I'm not what you think. I, I mean, I don't yeah. know how much I love that, but you know, it's yeah. something that could, it could be interesting, you know, mm-hmm. but also not at the same time. <laughs> um, I think, you know, a lot of people have said that Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. are the same person. So mm-hmm. it was like such a joy when he was cast to be like, Oh, this is, this is perfect. This guy's quick works. works. Yeah. It, it works and everything like that. I think Victor Von Doom is not a perfect fit. <laughs> not to say that, you know, Robert Downey Jr. can't play someone like that. He's played no, yeah. a bunch of different roles, you know, and, and things like that. I, I read an NPR article that was talking about they pulled out like five quotes from the comics to be like, let's rank how well we think Robert Downey Jr. could pull this off as Victor Von Doom. And I'm like, these are terrible comic book quotes, you know? Are they? Where he's yeah. like, oh, the Avengers, I will end you. Bah! It's like, no one's, that's not going to be the line. Like, you <laughs> no know. No one's writing that into the script. No. It's like, I don't <laughs> think you can deliver that line. I'm like, just, I know you're being a little snarkier, but, you know, right. relax. It's, they're, they're not going to do <laughs> shit like that. But, I mean, it's true because Victor Von Doom, he's not, you know, he's not quipping one-liners. You know, he's, no, very, he's very authoritarian. He's very intelligent. He's very much like he expects people to kneel and bow down to him and whatever and he's you know that that's something but who's just, i mean we watched you know robert Downey jr play you know strauss in in you know uh oppenheimer mm-hmm. very th- that guy wasn't was it tony that stark wasn't, that wasn't <laughs> robert downey jr like playing right. himself or you know, yeah that right. was definitely definitely was a character look and i mean he's the i mean you name it he did in tropic thunder my god you couldn't have played oh my something god more opposite than robert downey jr right you know like in yeah. in uh, in Chaplin, yeah, I, I don't like Charlie that argument Chaplin. of like ah, uh, he's perfect no. for Tony Stark. I don't know if he could handle Doctor Doom. I'm like, no, he's a fantastic I, actor. He's I just think like he I said at the it. top. Yeah, he's a he's an absolute great actor. I just again, I just think of all the, I think more than anything, not that he can't handle it. More than anything, it's just you have every actor, literally yeah. every working actor out there right now that you could choose from, and you you go back to this, and it just. It, it definitely feels a little bit like they're trying to claw back some of the goodwill. Like, look, we got the Russos. Oh, we got RDJ. Remember how good this combo was before come back mm-hmm. to us, you know? I don't know if that's that kind of play. Like, they're trying to pull in the nostalgia to be like, we're, we're the same. Who would remember you how, cast? Who would you cast remember, by Dr. Doom the instead? good times we had? Who, who would I cast? Man, mm-hmm. that's a good question. Uh <coughs> 
That's a really good question. And Justin, money is yeah. not an issue. I know that's typically your thing. Like, I mean, based on their rates and the markets and, you know, whatever. Like, I don't want I, you to I, think I, about any of that stuff. I, I spend is, a lot of time laboring over that. I really this do. This is, let's remove all constraints. There's no bad <laughs> ideas in a brainstorm. Okay. Okay. Um, tell you what, Morgan Freeman. Done. Morgan Freeman. That would be that would be interesting, man. That voice modulated. Actually, that would be kind of yeah. That'd be kind uh, of cool. <laughs> I who's uh I don't know if he's too young because I feel like what they're doing here is a more seasoned. <clears throat> you know, it'd be cool. Like hmm. originally, this person was looked at to play Tony Stark, but eventually didn't Ta- do it. So it would be cool to see this person play Doctor Doom, Tom Cruise. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. That I would feel be. Like Tom Cruise- does really Von fun. Doom run though? Because I feel like that would be. Well, he's Can you gonna just see him. He's his, gonna now in his, in his Doctor Doom costume. Just, just that Tom Cruise run. Yeah, man, it would be amazing. Yeah, um, it would be amazing. Who else was looked at? Uh, who was looked at to play Iron Man? Just because I love him, I'd also love to see Tom Hardy play Doctor Doom. Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, Tom Hardy's already been in a mask as Bane, so I don't know if that's just overdoing it. So, you know. That could be, yeah. Kind of but still, I'd love to same. see him, you know, <laughs> do Let's that. See, Timothy cool. Oliphant. Uh, okay, so just going off of people who, in theory, were kind of rumored to could potentially. Nick Cage. <laughs> I think Nick unhinged. Cage. Honest unhinged. to God, I think Nick Cage could play a very fun Doctor Doom. Oh, that'd be he's dude. He's in, he's having a moment right now. He is. I know, he's having like, a resurgence, and some of his shit is really fucking good right now. Like it's yeah. it's. I know, like he's a punchline to a lot of people, but he's having a fucking moment. He's right clawed now. his way back. He has. He's yeah. also been clawing his way back after paying his taxes. So you know, <laughs> he's making it happen. You know, he's like, I gotta work. Uh, what about Matthew McConaughey? A tremendous actor. I mean, tremendous actor, but I, I'm what I wonder if he have we heard him do any other accent than the accent that he just has naturally? No, (laughs) we have not. Can we We see him do British or just Eastern European? I want to hear it. Avengers, I'm gonna get you. (laughs) That's his class, Dr. Doom's classic. Bye, classic line. (laughs) Bye. Um, Uh, What about Leo DiCaprio? I can't, I feel like he. I can't no, imagine I him in any Marvel role. No. Um, Johnny Depp would be an interesting one. Yeah, that could be interesting. I mean, he did a heck of a job as uh, as uh, the, the the bad guy in the, the weird animals and, and they exist in America Wizards movie. Um, oh. Fan. <laughs> Fantastic Beast. That was like I felt. Man, I felt like we movie. jumped into. I felt like we jumped into the game already. Right. You're like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Are we Fantastic playing name, Beast. Name of movie plot in five words yeah. or less. Yeah. Mads Mikkelsen. Also. Ooh, ooh, now there we go. That, that would be guy's like a natural one, one to play. Because also, well, we can't do it because he was in Doctor Strange. So, unfortunately, uh, um, been great for Doctor Doom. Where is he? Honestly, Killian Murphy. Killian, I want. Uh, could he? Killian, Killian could be. Yeah, that could be he's, a cool one. I mean, he's done I Scarecrow, and he's done some other stuff. Like, yeah, he could. He could pull that off. That'd be fun. What about a uh, <laughs> Josh Brolin? He's played Cable. <laughs> he's played Thanos. Like, let's just let's just keep. You know what? If he you was in go the back Goonies. To, I mean, if you want to go back to the well? Let's just keep fucking going back to the well. You know, yeah. I mean, honestly, the, the point is there's a there's a ton of people that could do this. It just seems it seems like an odd choice to pick Rob Dane. Brendan Fraser. Yeah. As this character in the whale in this movie, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Bah. <laughs> bah. You know, uh, as he tries to stand up for his chair. Classic Von Doom line. Yeah, <laughs> um, man. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of great people that you could fucking cast in this role. Uh, yeah, I have. I'll say that it do not wish any like I hope they I like you have full faith in in the Russos. I they're fantastic storytellers. They know this universe. They've they've done a couple a handful of very successful 
MCU films already. So they're 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 steeped in this. I have no doubt they're going to do a great job with it. It is just very shocking casting news. You know, it's just it's yeah. you're just like, all right, let's see where this goes. Yeah, we'll give it a whirl. So 2026, we'll see what's going wait. on. We'll see what the teaser comes out to be, what it looks like and everything like that. So that also means between now and then we got to get caught up on whatever comes out. So, yeah, yay. which is a which is a thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's become a, it's become a job. Yeah, I don't um, know anymore. But I would say to the listeners, uh, let us know on any mm. of the platforms we're on. Who would you what do you think of this casting? First off, and then number two, who would you cast? Yes, because I think. Every time we post a question, I see people online weigh in. They always come up with something. I'm just like, I didn't even think of that. That's There's so some cool. Great so, minds out there. Let's crowdsource want, some stuff. I want to know. Let's crowdsource it, and maybe you know, uh, maybe we can get reach the ears of the Russos. Ha. Yeah, ha. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's turn to some more serious news uh, because this is a serious <laughs> mm. show about real hard hitting things and and let's talk about food law because sometimes we like to dissect law (laughs) there's a lot of law out there there's a lot going on with the supreme court and just local district courts and your local judges you know make sure to go out and vote but really this comes down to this actually is is a real good reason why you need to pay attention because food law baby uh ohio supreme court says boneless chicken wings can have bones i'm gonna let you I'm i'm gonna let that sink in for a minute here i'm gonna let that stew i'm gonna let that marinate i'm gonna let that rotisserie you know (laughs) i'm gonna 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 let let that that get breaded and fried for a minute um byline or the 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 subline here is republicans on the ohio supreme court ruled that bones are a natural part of the chicken so a consumer should be on guard for them even in boneless wings um the quick backstory here is there was a man what I love about this is like it gets very specific about mm-hmm. what this guy was doing. On April 2016, Michael Burkheimer ordered boneless wings with Parmesan garlic sauce at Wings <laughs> on Brook, Brookwood in Hamilton. I was just like, do we need the Parmesan garlic sauce? Right. Is that is that pertinent to this case? <laughs> and also, I got to hand to the, the proprietors of this establishment. They're like, what are we going to name it? I mean, let's not let's just be straightforward. We're called Wings. <laughs> wings on Brookwood, you know? Yeah. So I know he's eating his boneless wings on the third piece. He felt something go down the wrong pipe. He unsuccessfully tried clearing his throat and later that night started to run a fever. The next day, a doctor removed the chicken bone, but Burkheimer ended up with an infection and endured two surgeries. I don't understand how any of that's possible. Because when he says a bone, I'm thinking like a chicken wing bone. Are we talking like a just drumlet? like... like But yeah. it, was it just like a piece, like a small thing? Like from from a wing, right? Like a true wing, not the drumlet, but the true wing. Like, was it one of yeah. those the thin ones that go around the side that just snapped off a little bit? Yeah, I imagine it had to be like a piece or something that just got. It had to have been. There. It couldn't have been. Look, he's Two not going to swallow an, He's not going to swallow an entire like three inch bone and be like, "All right, can I go?" Oh, I went now? down the wrong pipe. <coughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and man, this is like we talked about, man, when you when you when you pull your back, you blow out your back and you're like, man, I hope it's doing something cool. Not like, you know, tying my shoes. And yeah. This guy's like, man, what happened? You're in the surgery. I, I was eating wings, boneless wings, and I caught a, a bone and I had two fucking surgeries, man. That's wild. <laughs> That's absolutely wild. I- so this guy, Berkheimer, sued the restaurant owners as well as the chicken suppliers and the processors. And the argument was that once it went all the way up to the Ohio Supreme court and they basically, Which, I've, can I, can I pause you there and go, yeah. I love the fact that this is we with everything else that's going on right now, news is moving at a breakneck speed. Things are happening in this country. And this is what the Ohio Supreme court is taking time to decide. They're doing the Lord's work, Doug. Listen, they Indiana really decided that burritos are sandwiches. So I mean, I, look, I'm just saying it's a big year for food law. It's a okay? big year for food law. And I'm, it's it's about damn time that food law got its day in court. I love this. I love this de- like the the argument from the defense. I this. hate it, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> a diner <laughs> eating so boneless wings on a menu would no more believe that the restaurant was warranting the absence of bones in the items than believe the items were made from chicken wings. Just as a person eating chicken fingers would know that he had not been served fingers. 
The food items label on the menu described a cooking style. It was not a guarantee. That is the most, in my personal opinion, that is the most incoherent argument that you could possibly lay out. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. It makes sense to me, but what it's called is a call, it's called a stretch. <laughs> it's called a stretch. It's like, hey man, if it says chicken fingers, are you eating chicken fingers? I rest my case, your honor. Right. Like, I, okay, I guess I, I, all right, I suppose. So he's saying boneless wings are, not, it's just chicken meat. That's all it is. That's yeah. what you're eating. You're not eating an actual wing or like the drumlet. You're eating a, a just a hunk of chicken meat. It's been this is a, a menu is that- item that's labeled creatively. It's a cooking style. It doesn't mean that it actually has boneless wings, which I'm like. I will say this. It's not a cooking style. Agreed. That's not a cook. Your your argument does not hold water because that is not true. It's just not a cooking style. How do I you, agree. How, how are you going to cook this? Wing style. <laughs> no, boneless, boneless wing, wing style. style. Yeah. No, you it's know? not a cooking style. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I guess you could, to some extent, I, yeah, because he doesn't want to go that way because you're like, well, it's a way that is prepared because if it's a way that's prepared, then it's like, then it should be, it's boneless is what you're saying, right. you know? Like, is, well, yeah, if that's, if that's the cooking style, then God damn it, right. it should be boneless. Because, I mean, if it says bone in ribeye and there's no bone, <laughs> what the fuck, right? What are we doing? What are we even doing? What am I paying for? Right. Again, I think it's a really weak argument. It's very weak because I feel like you could go down any number of things. Because with that same thing, it's like, yeah, I'll take the uh, just the ribeye, no bone. And they provide you with a bone. You're like, this isn't what I fucking ordered. You know? Right. Now, granted, when you eat that, you're going to see that there's a fucking bone on it, right? You're not going to just be like, hum, nom, nom, ow, a bone. Like, it's. Oh, I know, chipped my tooth. Yeah. Yeah, right? You know? Um, so, I, I don't know. I think it's, I, it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> I do think that this is a wonderful. <laughs> Uh, I think this is a wonderful, uh, uh, the defendant argued that, all right, so yeah, the defendants argued that bones are natural to meat, so consumers should expect them. So again, the, the Republicans on this side are arguing, you know, this is how God made it. You need to accept it how God made it. And the Democrats are going, let the chicken be what the chicken wants to be, man. It's not the Democrats that are arguing that. It's it's the defendants, the person, right? The, the defendants. defendants. The defendants are the people like the the uh the restaurant, you know, the the people that right. are suing. They're not Democrats. I'm assuming though. I'm what's that? <laughs> They're not Democrats. We don't know that. We don't know their political leanings. Well, I'm just assuming that because they were the defendants in the court leaned in their favor. Okay. And the court is a Republican majority. Mm-hmm. That that's just the Republican argument. Can't you just Are you talking about the, the court justices? <laughs> I'm confused. Who's on first? Doesn't matter. What? <laughs> um, well, they're saying bones are natural to meat, so consumers should expect them. That's yeah. that is in that argument is in is in alignment with what the court decided. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Wait. Shit. Wait. What? I'm gonna come. <laughs> Almost got him. Almost got him. Oh, that was a close one too. That Almost got close him. Oh, well, man. no. Okay, let me let me pull back my argument again. Oh boy, we're gonna let's, re- let's do it. No, Get into it, Justin. It. Let's reframe it. Get out the okay? dry erase board. <laughs> 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 so the, the the Republican held court uh, or the Republican uh, majority court said that uh, uh, chickens are boneless. Meat. Boneless can be what? Chickens are meat. <laughs> chickens are meat. Yeah. But you know what? It's not even worth the joke anymore. Fuck it. I'm not, I'm done. Whatever. This is stupid. It's stupid that the fucking Ohio Supreme Court, Republican or Democrat, is hearing this case. Go fuck yourself. A lower court should be deciding this. I love. Uh, what are we doing, Ohio? A person that responded to like the court's ruling Jesus. says he called the they called that argument utter jabberwocky, and they said still. You have to give the majority its due. It realizes that boneless wings are not actually wings and that chicken fingers are not actually fingers. <laughs> Most absurd <laughs> fucking argument ever. That same person was arguing that um, could it, it, oh, the ruling yeah. provides legal protection to food yep. businesses, but wrote that it could have more serious consequences. Could someone allergic to nuts or gluten sue if they were served something dangerous to them? Right? So... It could say, you know, this court could point to the decision in this case and say that lactose and gluten and nuts are natural to foods, you know? So, yeah. Um, 
It's 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 a wild thing. I just the the whole concept of this is just like it's the fact that someone's like <laughs> boneless wings in parentheses may contain bones. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. No, look. I again. I I will say it is this is it's the most stupid. It's the stupidest fucking case. It's the stupidest case to bring up to the highest court in your state. Like it's just when I first initially when I read this. I thought I didn't read Ohio. I just saw Supreme Court says, and I'm like, this is what they're fucking. Sp-. I got irate, and then I had to pull it back because I was like, okay, we're talking about Ohio, so temper your expectations immediately. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no breach of a yeah when a customer could have reasonably expected and guarded against the presence of the injurious substance in the food. Fuck I'll you. say this much: when I'm biting into something. You know, and you taste something weird. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going against the guy who. who, who I, yeah, I feel like that's also kind of a dumb argument because you should always be on guard against anything that goes just, in your mouth. You know, just in general, you're biting. You know, and you're like, dink. You're like, ah, that's weird. I've bitten into all sorts of stuff and be like, that's a weird bite. That doesn't seem right. right. Hak tui. You know, Hak-tui. and <laughs> you know, when I eat watermelon, it says, you know, seedless. Sometimes you get I seeds. A seed or two. Yeah. Same thing with with grapes. Every now and again, there's a seed in there, and I don't like it. And I mm-hmm. spit it out. But that's Even also you when, know. When you were up at my place this last weekend, and mm-hmm. and you, uh, I offered you a cherry. I I I made sure you were on guard. And I said, keep in mind, this has a pit. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. This is really dumb. But I want to ask seed, the question: whatever. What yeah. other things that are that state what they are? like boneless wings, should we now be concerned about moving forward to, you know, should we expect them to have what they say they don't have or don't have what they say they have, you know? Right. Like if I get chocolate ice cream and there's no chocolate in it, should I, if I order chocolate ice cream and it comes out vanilla, should I say, and they're like, well, there's a chance that there might not be chocolate in this. It's just ice cream. It's just the way it comes. You know, honestly, chocolate is not normal. To no. the dairy world, you have to. That's it's an, an additive. additive. Yeah, yeah. So you ordered you can't ice cream. I ordered chocolate ice cream. That doesn't matter. Yeah. What if I order a corn dog and it doesn't have a hot dog in it? You know, right? It's just the stick. I was like, or I don't want to stick a bunch with of the fried breading. cornmeal, right? Or what if it's just a hot dog with no cornmeal around it? There you go. Here's your it's corn just dog. A hot dog it's and like, a stick. Where's the corn? Where's right. the corn? No. Asshole. You know. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just constantly blown away by uh, just the way we label things in the country in general. For the longest time, years ago, before you know really dark things were happening on a regular basis, I'd walk by a, a place and it'd be like a a no firearms sign. I'm like, well, no shit, you know, like yeah. obviously, you obviously, do, yeah. there's this is a no gun area because no place should be a gun area. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, do yeah. you have to put that on the store? Like. You shouldn't okay. need it coming into Starbucks. Right? It's like, yeah, yeah no guns here. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> We're all ordering a, a, a coffee or a fucking scone. Why are you yeah. why are you strapped? Yeah, we don't we don't need that in here. We don't need um, that. Just in general, just the way, you know, because of shit like this, there right. you know now, at the very least in Ohio, mm-hmm. possibly elsewhere, there's gonna be notations on menus that say, you know, oh, yeah. Hey, this is a uh, Cobb salad may not include Cobb, you know, like, or whatever. There's just going to be shit like that. That happens, you know, where they have to put I'm sorry, in parentheses. Waiter, uh, is there Cobb in this? They're like, it's a natural state. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see whether we'll or not, you know, I don't know. Do you want to roll the dice? You want to roll the dice and see what you yeah. get. We got a new chef. Um, so who knows what's coming out? Honestly. And honestly, what are boneless wings? Are they just chicken nuggets? Like what? Again, what, that's what I was saying. I, I think it's just a hunk of chicken meat, right? Yeah, I would assume so. Like you're just basically ordering chicken nuggets or chicken tendies. What is a boneless wing? Yeah. <laughs> boneless skinless chicken breast, usually sliced, breaded, and fried to make the boneless wings. They're typically coated in a sauce, essentially, they and, and are essentially chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just chicken That's breast. It. So I would also, uh, yeah, that, that to me is weird that a chicken breast would have a bone in it. Like, mm-hmm. Whenever I have my chicken breast, even when I get a rotisserie chicken and I cut the chicken breast off, guess what it doesn't have? Fucking bone. Right. It's just well, also, meat. I mean, is this, I mean, the, the, <clears throat> based on the exterior of this place, are they ordering, are they ordering whole chickens and butchering them in the back? Or are they Absolutely ordering, 
are they ordering just like chicken breasts and chopping them up? Because when again, when you go to the store, not even rotisserie chicken, if you go to the store and just get some chicken breasts, I would say, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you find one of those teeny little bones, you know, in uh, in there. But if it if it was butchered like improperly, but I mean, by and large, you're not going to it. Where did it come from? <laughs> This, See, and this that's is the best question. We were asking, they were asking the wrong question. Where the fuck did this bone come from? I was it even the asking, bone of a chicken? What do you, what was the meat? Did we test it? Did we right? test the meat? What are we talking about? Are they preparing about their boneless chicken wings by making the chicken wings like bone in and then just with their bare hands just stripping off the meat and putting it in a basket? Is that is a boneless possum? chicken wing? That's my question. Is it possible? Is Ask it yourself raccoon? That. Ask yourself that, Mr. Dieters. Right? <laughs> Mr. Dieters, were you eating squirrel? Huh? Huh? Hmm? What do you think hmm? about that, you son of a bitch? Well, How do you sleep at night, Mr. Dieters? Well, let us know <laughs> what you think about food law and what other food law we should look into because <laughs> this fascinates us and gets us all hot and bothered. So I, uh, I want to know down those comments what you think. I want to make food law a reoccurring segment on here. I think this is 100%. Yeah. Eventually, like, we're going to do food law. <laughs> eventually, I would love to uh, get a lawyer on here, bring all these stories back up and have him or her break down the uh, like, let's let's get into it. You know, explain to me yeah. what the process was that they went through for this fucking trial. There's a great podcast called Strict Scrutiny. And these three wonderful women uh, who have wonderful degrees break down all of the stuff about the Supreme Court and all things law. law. I'd love to get them on and be like, I want to talk to you about boneless, <laughs> boneless wings. How does this get to the Ohio Supreme Court? Can you break this down for me? We got some serious questions we need answered. Okay. Because they do a great job of like breaking down arguments and everything like that. I'm like, (laughs) I need you to go through. I need you to do this case and come on here and tell me why this is a thing. Can you do that for me, please? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for games. That's all I got. Um, All right, Justin. Yes. We're back on it again. We're going to be playing you some clips. All of yes. these are lines from movies. No sound effects this time. So I'm going to play Justin a line from a movie. He is going to have to guess what movie it's from. Okay. So he's been pretty on point recently. And I have a feeling you're going to do really well with all of these. I got a, I got a feeling. So I'm worried now because you know that usually is the death kiss. No, you're going to. I think you're going to be good. Okay. So Justin, you're confident. You're beautiful. Are you ready? <sighs> Yes, born ready. All right, here we go. Here's your first one. You're in more dire need of a blowjob than any white man in history. Uh, Dad? uh, Huh? Dad? Dad? (laughs) Dad? Dad? Uh, uh, It's Robin Williams for sure. I want to say good morning, Vietnam. Yes! Yes. Right out the gate. Ha-cha-cha. One of my my favorite favorite moments of that movie is when he basically tells off the cranky staff sergeant. That he's just like, he basically got fired on his way out. He was just basically just says, You're in more dire need of a blowjob than any white man in history. And it's just such a great, like, and then he closes the door and the guy's like, What'd you say? <laughs> my, one of my favorite lines on there, and I'm not a sports fan, but it always kills me, is when, the, again, the sergeant looks at him and he goes, He's pointing to the, the lines on his arm and he goes, What does three up and three down mean to you? And Rob Williams goes, End of an inning. <laughs> So good. Great yeah, film. That was that was the film that made me uh realize that I wanted to go into uh radio and then filmmaking. That was that was kind yeah. of the film that opened up that as a possible career path for me. Yeah. That was pretty dope. Well done. All right, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Here we go. You know, I can uh eat a peach for hours. <laughs> that is that is uh, that is Victor Von Doom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one we want to be Victor the, Von Doom. That is, that's the Victor Von Doom we deserve. All right. In, uh, he's saying in that line as he as he's talking to the Avengers, right. an underage uh, choir girl in the Face Off. <laughs> it's not who he's talking to in Face Off. It is Face Off. It's is when that he's not on when he's plane. The, the priest. He's on the, you know, he he grabs a girl's ass when he's that, but he is on the plane about to take off. And the undercover agent who dresses wildly just, I don't know, man, it's weird what she's wearing. He's like, 
basically tells her I could eat a peach for hours before Got it. Okay. ultimately finds out she's an agent and kills her. Yeah, yeah some reason I thought that was movie. when they were in the uh, – that was the opening, but I was yeah, right. God, but yes, so but I was right. So creepy. No, 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 there's I so many things. Eat a peach for hours. Ugh. I'd love, I'd love a lady to be like, does that work for you? Is that a good line? <laughs> cool. Please know, take man. your seat. Because <laughs> <laughs> I imagine in guys' minds are like, I got this. Check this I, out. Hey, I could eat a peach for hours. I'd be like, ugh. Right. I don't have it, that it, much time, you know? <laughs> I got things to do, man. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> right. I'm busy. Ugh. All right. Here we go. Okay. Possibly last one. If you get this one real quick, I've got another one in the, in, okay. in the docket. So here we go. A woman's shoulders are the front lines of a mystique and her neck. That's all the mystery of a border town. Ooh, that's a... Say, wait, I, I couldn't almost understand what he was saying. Say, uh, one more time. Yeah, listen carefully. It's really important. Yeah, a woman's shoulders are the front lines of her mystique and her neck. That's all the mystery of a border town. It's the front lines of her shoulders, the front lines of her mystique, and the neck has the mystery of a border town. <laughs> yep, Who's... all normal things you say. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the line is? That's exactly what the line is. Normal conversation that you have with people. <laughs> All right. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a wild thing to say. I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, 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 but yeah, you say all that and then you follow that up with I could eat a peach for hours. It's like, wow. Okay. We yeah. dropped all pretenses and, at this point. And then and then when the woman walks away, his friend turns to him and goes, you are in need of a dire. You're in dire need of a blowjob <laughs> more than any white man I've ever. Whatever the fucking line is. Um, yeah. <laughs> I oh man. First of all, okay, so you know the actor. I'm or, or do you? Do I is the question. Do you? Uh <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so they're in some sort of uh like CD piano bar or some yeah, like some I'm I'm assuming like a smoke filled room and they both have martini glasses in front of them. Um based on the ambiance. I cannot nail down the actor's voice, though. Give it to me again. A woman's shoulders are the front lines of her mystique and her neck. That's all the mystery of a border town. Oh, okay. Al Pacino. Scent of a woman? Nope. It is Al Pacino. Ah. Oh, we already did Scent of a Woman. Mm Mm-mm. Sure didn't. didn't? (laughs) What Pacino movie? Did we do Heat? No. Heat. We did Heat. Did we do another Pacino movie? Maybe. Uh, someone will have to read it back to me. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. Okay. What, uh, let's, what fucking movie would he have been? <laughs> God damn it. All right, Pacino. <clears throat> it's not Scent of a Woman. It is... He's not doing a horrible Cuban accent, so it's definitely not Scarface. I I want to do Scarface, but I'm like, you'll get it immediately. I mean, it's, it, that's that's a tough one to trick someone with, really. Yeah, There's unless some you great pull... lines from that that aren't just like you know, say hello to my little friend. Yeah. You know, that'd be like, oh, that's really cool. But you, know. you got to pull someone who's not Pacino in that movie, like just yeah, like right. another rand- like a rando's line. But it's also um, going to be like, oh, that's a bad uh, you know, <laughs> Latin right. accent or Cuban accent, so. Or it's just the clip is just, <laughs> oh, or it's just it's like Scarface, the random like the couple of English, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer maybe I don't know. I'll give you a hint. Uh, yeah, please. This movie came I'm, out. I'm... This movie came out in 1997. Oh fuck! Yep, Devil's Advocate. It's Devil's Advocate. It's Devil's Advocate. God damn it. That's I right. love it. I give you Man. the year and you're like, all right, I know what it is. I know what it impressive. is. The thing is, it puts me in the right range. I know roughly what came out that year and that, that mm-hmm. that's that movie. God, that's yeah. such a movie. That is a that movie. Is, that's that a is, movie. There was a lot to choose from for that movie. And I'm not saying I'm 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 not done oh, with that yet. Please, but, let's uh, go back to that well. I'm done. <laughs> because honestly, I remember this because when, uh, how did this get made? Yeah, did the episode in in Jason Manzuka specifically call out this line? He's like, "And your neck is like a border town." He's like, "Because you know, 
that's all the places we want to hang out is at a border <laughs> town. You know? <laughs> It's got all the mystery of a border town. It's like, I don't want to go there. You know, I, don't know. Like, I don't know if you're complimenting me or you're going to invade me. I don't do you like remember the scene? Uh, no, I don't. So this is when... Uh, are they in, the, are they in his, his office? They're they're at a, a, a fancy fancy dinner party. Okay. And Al Pacino is talking to uh, Charlize Theron. And he's like being like, you're beautiful. And all this sort of stuff. And he's like, go ahead, lift up your hair. And she's like, right here, right now. He's like, yeah, do it. And she lifts it up and he's like, yeah, there it is. You got to cut your hair because a woman's shoulders are the front line <laughs> to a mistake in her neck is all the mystery of a border town. And it's like, you know what? I think I'm going to leave it as it is. You know, maybe Ooh. I'll put it up in a bun at some point. But I, I don't, well, based on what you said, I don't think I need to cut my hair. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Uh, the devil's advocate i need to know who wrote this film who wrote that line or was that one where pacino was like hold on i got this i'm in the mood i got this i know i got this this. let me vamp (laughs) give it to me baby (laughs) taylor hackford let me vamp (laughs) um okay so andrew niederman john lemkin and tony gilroy i i need to know which one of those three wrote this fucking line (laughs) Well, we're going to put it out there to you all. Do you know which one of them wrote this line? If yeah. so, get at us. Please get at us because this is going to keep me up at night. Justin, you did very well. Very good Thank job. you. This is a great fun job. fucking game, man. I'm telling you. I love you. this game. This is great. This is super fun. Uh, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? Oh, buddy. I got to... Uh, wait a second. Really? Yeah, one <laughs> of the writers... Sorry. One of the writers wrote the Born trilogy... Armageddon, Rogue One, and Andor. I bet he wrote the line. That's got to be him. Hard stop. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, I got to recommend uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, saw it on my birthday on the 25th and uh, uh, came out the 26th. And I, I hopped online and there was a showing the night before. And I'm like, fuck it. That is happy birthday to this fucking guy. I'm doing this. Yeah. By the way, happy every- birthday. Hey, thank you. It yeah. was, but it was everything, man. Uh, it is. I'll say the only thing I'll say is that um, Deadpool used to be able to live in his own lane, mm-hmm. uh, to kind of doing what he wants to do. Now that he's folded into the MCU, it gets a little convoluted because he Reynolds had to had to fold a lot of this stuff in. So. There's a lot going on, but if you just put that aside and go, cool, I'm just going to accept what they're saying to me. The rest of the movie is an absolute insane, insane roller coaster ride. By far the most meta of the Deadpools. The, the fourth wall breaking is next level. And the cameos, which again, Ryan Reynolds has uh, insisted that they're not cameos. They're all... Um, starring roles that are integral to the story. So, mm-hmm. uh, but the cameos just for, you know, the sake of the, uh, the conversation, some of them, I, I, they had my jaw on the ground. I could not believe he pulled some of the people he pulled. So I cannot uh, full throated support for Deadpool and Wolverine. Please go see this movie. It's f- fucking awesome. Well, I look he, forward to seeing it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, yeah. I also saw that it grossed over $200 million. Yeah. The weekend for it's an R rated film. It, I think it, it currently it just crossed over the sixth highest R-rated uh, uh, opener, yeah. yeah, yeah, in history. So fucking amazing, yeah, yeah. It well broke done. its own previous record. So we're actually, I'm, yeah, I'm curious uh, as you're giving. Uh, what do you got, Dougie? I'm gonna look up where it's currently at. Uh, I saw Twisters uh, when it came out with Ooh. my daughter, and uh, I was pretty neutral going into the film because the first movie I was always like, eh, it's fine. I didn't necessarily understand all the hype about it, but uh, my daughter's fascinated with tornadoes. So she's like, we got to go see this. I'm like, okay. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I was like, I had zero expectations. Maybe that's why it was so good to me. Um, But I enjoyed the cast. Story was fine. And uh, it was kind of interesting and whatever. It was, it was a fun, it was a fun, it was a fun. That's what I was saying. It was was a fun. It was a fun. It was a fun. Uh, And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, It was a good time. I, I don't know. Maybe this guy enjoyed it because Natalie had such a fun time going. I love going to the movies with her. So yeah, it's good. I had a good time. I, I um, it. Was it uh, do here? Let me ask you this. Do I need to know anything about the first one? Nope. 
good. <laughs> have you seen the first one? Oh, I have. But it's been, I think I saw the first one like. 1996 when it came out. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a long fucking time. No. Uh, okay. The tornadoes are back for vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> what if that was the tagline? They just leaned into it like Sharknado. That reminds me. When my brother came to visit me, we watched a really bad trailer for a movie called The Twisters. Okay. And it is like, it. it it's like all these tornadoes are somehow like converging at the same time into one super tornado. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked so bad. And I was like, wow. And of course, they're releasing it at the same time as Twisters, but now it's The Twisters. And uh, it was, oof. I was like, well, we're doing what we can here to make stuff. Look, to make as content. long as there's a fire tornado, I'm happy. Oh, man, it was wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, well, gang, uh, as always, please check us out at youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment to let YouTube know that we're pretty cool and you'd like to see more of us. And, of course, share us around. Pick your favorite episode, your favorite clip, whatever. Share it to a friend and be like, hey, I think you might like this. And also check the description for links to our Discord, links to our Patreon, links to our merch at Redbubble. And be sure to follow us on all social media at mindgap.com. And be sure to check out Justin online as well. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, don't forget, anywhere where you can find audio versions of podcasts, you can find us. So go ahead and listen to us there as well. Uh, like, sus- subscribe, share, rate, review, all those things. But please share us around. Let people know we exist. And then 2 eastaithcom 2 eastaith and all social media, 11 improvfilmcom 11 improvfilm on Instagram. Booyah. And with that, Booyah. I will say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you, and you all have a dandy fucking week. Bye,